You want to work in big tech, but if you can't problem solve, then you might as well kiss your dreams goodbye. You see, the whole reason of a coding interview is to see how you solve problems, and most people don't know the right mindsets or strategies to do this. But don't worry, because I'm going to guide you on how to train your brain to solve any coding problem, and it's actually pretty easy. The fast and slow brain method. Imagine your brain has two modes of thinking, like two different speeds on a car. The first one is your fast brain. This is like being in automatic mode. It's quick, intuitive, and helps you solve familiar problems almost instantly. And it's kind of like driving on a route you already know. But what happens when you're driving on a new road? Well, this is where you switch to your slow brain. Think of this as your brain's manual mode. This is where you're essentially forcing your brain to learn and adapt to new things on the fly. But how does this all relate to coding? Well, imagine if every time you sat down to code, your fast brain can instantly recognize and solve the problems you encounter. That would allow you to almost automatically tackle any coding problem. So how do we train our fast brain to do this? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You need to train your slow brain first. You see, your fast brain only becomes effective when it's already learned patterns through your slow brain. So let's say you're learning something new, like a DSA problem or a pattern. You first need to start by engaging your slow brain. This means understanding the intricacies of whatever you're learning. You can do this by drawing out ideas or looking at similar problems, but most importantly, when you get the answer, either by looking it up or finding it on your own, make sure you really learn why the solution works and don't just memorize the answer. Try and think of how you would have come up with that solution and what could have led you in the right path. And over time, after repeated practice and problem solving, your brain will start to categorize these problems into recognizable patterns. Now, this means you'll gradually start developing pattern recognition and in the future, whenever you face similar questions like in an interview or an assignment, you'll be able to solve it quickly quickly and almost automatically because of this slow to fast brain process. So when you see someone who easily solves really difficult coding problems, the only difference between you and them is that they use their slow brain to really understand the fundamentals of each problem. And with enough repetition and practice, these problems have become part of their fast brain, making it look easy whenever they code. So to sum it up, the more you expose your slow brain to challenges and problems, the more your fast brain will start kicking in when faced with similar problems down the road. The rubber duck technique. The rubber duck technique is simple but really effective. The idea is that you explain your code step by step to a rubber duck or pretty much anything as if you were trying to teach it. And here's why this works. Explaining your problem forces you to slow down and really think about every decision you made in your code. And oftentimes when you describe your logic out loud, it's easier to catch bugs or gaps in your reasoning that you'd otherwise miss. So let's break it down. First, you encounter a problem in your code and you're stuck. But before diving back into debugging, grab a rubber duck or even just imagine one and pretend it's a beginner programmer. Then start by explaining your code line by line as if you were teaching the duck. But make sure you don't skip anything because the goal is to simplify your explanation to the point that someone with no prior knowledge could understand. And finally, as you talk through the logic, you'll often realize where the bug or issue might be lurking. This technique improves your problem solving process by making you more aware of the choices you made in your code. And think about it, when you're finally in a coding interview, you're gonna need to have practice verbalizing your thoughts and the bugs you run into. because interviewers want to see things like the way you approach problems, algorithms you consider, different trade-offs, and so forth. And this is going to be hard to communicate if you haven't had any practice. So just to recap, whenever you're solving a problem, take the time to explain the problem to any object as if it were a beginner programmer. This will help you gain more ideas, troubleshoot bugs, and overall prepare you for verbalization during a technical interview. The 10 minute primer. It's simple. Before diving into any code, set a 10 minute timer, and during these 10 minutes, get a high level overview of the task or problem at hand. This could mean anything from reviewing the problem, skimming relevant materials, or mentally preparing yourself. Think of it as warming up your brain before the heavy lifting begins. But why is this method useful? Well, the key benefit is that it helps improve focus and efficiency. Because by setting a timer, you create a sense of urgency, which is especially helpful for people who tend to get stuck in analysis paralysis or overthinking the problem before they've even started. Because you're essentially telling your brain to only think about the problem for 10 minutes, which is a lot easier than telling your brain to solve the whole problem right away. So instead of staring at a blank screen unsure of where to begin, the 10 minute primer method breaks that initial barrier by giving you a gentle introduction. Think of it like dipping your toes in the water before actually jumping in. Basically, the timer creates a boundary, making sure you don't spend too long in the planning phase, but also pushing you to start. During these 10 minutes, your fast brain should be on the lookout for any patterns or familiar elements. You're not trying to solve the problem yet, but your brain should be beginning to identify pieces of the puzzle that 
might be similar to problems you've solved before. Maybe the problem involves sorting, recursion, or traversing, and if these are things you've encountered before, you'll start to recognize what kind of problem you're dealing with. And even if you don't have all the answers right away, this quick review will help your brain prepare itself for what's coming. And after these 10 minutes, even if you don't know the full solution, this method gives you a roadmap and an introduction to follow when you're coding. The lighthouse method. Picture this, when you're lost at sea, what do you need most? A lighthouse. A guiding light that shows you where to go step by step. Now imagine that difficult coding problem as the storm. It's huge, complicated, and you feel like you don't know where to start. That's normal. But instead of panicking, what if you focused on smaller, related problems that are easier to solve? These are your lighthouses. Let's break it down. You're working on a hard problem and feeling completely stuck. So take a step back and instead of diving into the full problem head first, try and solve a simpler version of it. Maybe reduce the size of the input or isolate one part of the logic. And remember, each smaller problem you solve lights up your path a little more, bringing you closer to the final destination. The beauty of this method is that you're not aiming to solve the whole problem at once, but instead you're creating mini checkpoints in your brain. These small checkpoints serve to build momentum and give you insight into the bigger picture. So when everything starts to come together, it's like the light from a lighthouse guiding you closer and closer to the shore. And here's the best part of this whole strategy. This method doesn't just help you in the moment, it gradually trains your brain to approach problems systematically. So, when stuck on any problem, instead of being overwhelmed by the complexity, you'll get used to breaking problems down into easier pieces. Which means next time you're in a coding interview or working on a project, you'll instinctively look for these smaller problems first, giving you a clear route to solve any difficult problem. Overall, I hope this helped you gain a better idea on how to approach and solve coding problems.